please welcome to the stage Dr. Bobby Wegner of groups Harvard and USA for IOM, Amy Pope, International Organization for Migration, and Mauricio Ramos, Millicom. <laughs> 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 Yeah, great. You ready? Good. Hi, everyone. We're so happy to be here. My name is Bobby Wegner. I'm a clinical psychologist. <clears throat> Sorry. I'm a clinical psychologist. I'm a lecturer at Harvard in organizational psychology and in the School of Education. Uh, I'm a startup founder, and I'm really here as a proud board member of USA for IOM. And we're just really excited to be here. I, Amy Pope is here. She's an incoming director general of IOM and the first female leader of IOM, which we're really, really proud of, and Mauricio Ramos as well. So the CEO of Millicom, and I think the, um, yeah, the, the, the chairman of the board currently too as well, That's as far correct. as I understand it. So on top of having our lovely guests here today, um, the Citigroup is also supporting this session between USA for IOM and our partners here today. And we're really focused on the entrepreneurship movement um, program in which we really look at innovative solutions to support the socioeconomic migration, um, bringing economic resilience to both migrants and their host communities. Philanthropic organizations and private sector are indispensable partners for USA for IOM and for IOM, offering unique skills, knowledge, and resources for tackling today's pressing humanitarian and developmental challenges. Together with the private sector, we expand result-based programming that benefit migrants and host communities that further advance IOM's labor migration priorities. The IOM and Millicom, and Millicom partnership gives migrants and host communities the necessary tools to flourish socioeconomically in today's digital landscape. Through capacity training on digital tools for personal and professional development, the partnership's Women Empowerment Program has trained thousands of women achieving millions of dollars in new sales. In this fireside chat, we'll set the scene in Latin America and discuss how the public-private sector partnerships can act as agents of change and impact offerings to increase community involvement and opportunities to empower migrants and um, host communities while addressing really the root causes of migration. So with that, we'll get the conversation started. And Amy, I'm wondering if we can really start with you, if you're ready to jump on in. Go for it, yeah. Okay. So can you set the migration stage for us in Latin America? So what resources are available currently? What's IOM doing? And just share a little bit about what's happening. Yeah, absolutely. So let me actually go broader than Latin America for a second. Right. right? So we know that there are more than 110 million people who are forcibly displaced today. Right. And when we look at what is displacing people, we know increasingly people cannot stay at home, cannot find economic opportunities because of climate change. So you think about globally uh, what climate impact will have on especially vulnerable communities. And we recognize there may be hundreds of millions of people more who are not resilient enough to withstand what is coming their way. We see that especially in Latin America. We see extremely vulnerable communities who do not have the opportunities to stay at home. But what we also see, and we all, I'm sure everyone in this room has their own personal experience of where migration has actually delivered tremendous public good. So whether it's your own parents or your grandparents who came to the United States years ago, whether or not it's um, working in any number of tech companies that are founded by migrants, um, whether it's a small business that has really been revitalized because of migrants, Every single day, we see the tremendous human potential of human migration, of human mobility. So the link there for me is building the ecosystem. How do we unlock this incredible human potential? How do we stop thinking about migration as a problem that has to be solved? And that's where this partnership comes in, right? It's recognizing that the private sector actually benefits when migration is well managed. Mm -hmm. When we think about what are the challenges of our future? When we think about demographic changes, when we think about the impact of climate, there is this extraordinary potential that can only be achieved with the private sector working hand in hand um, with organizations like ours. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you so much for sharing. And I'm wondering, Mauricio, if anything sort of resonates or what, you know, and while Amy's speaking, like what, what comes to mind for you? Just about everything. And, and let me explain, you know, who we are and why we're here and why mm -hmm. the topic is so, so relevant to what we do. Uh, some of you may know us not as Millicom, but as, as Tigo. We are a mobile phone operator and residential broadband operator in nine countries in Latin America particularly in Central America. We are typically one of or the largest operator in the country and one of the largest investors in those countries, particularly Central America, where, of course, the issue of migration is important for those communities, for us, and obviously to the destinies and sources of those migration. And because we like public private partnerships because we would like to work on the topics that affect our communities and make them be better communities, whether it's here or there, then these conversations for us are vital mm -hmm. for the long term uh, of the communities that we work and serve. So that's who we are and that's why we're here. Great. Well, thank you so much for sharing. And I, I mean, I think all of us are probably in unanimous mm -hmm. agreement that there really has to be private um, and public sector partnerships to actually make a change rather than just sort of living in silos and mm -hmm. um, not, not communicating. But when we think more specifically about IOM and Millicom, like what do you see is really the value add for Millicom or what, how are you kind of like, I guess, more uniquely positioned or like what, what do you think the best, like what, what does that look like for you or what excites you about this partnership given your specific expertise? So I'm going to tell you a little story. Great. I was just waiting for the yes. opportunity, the moment in which someone would introduce me to Amy. I right? <laughs> didn't know that. That's why you're and, here. And then uh, the partnership for Center America that we are a part of, the White House-led partnership for Center America, did the introduction. Yeah. Mm. Said, you know, guys, you need to talk to each other because, you know, the IOM is at the center of what we want to do in that region, and, and so are you, Millicom. We're, we're part of the PCA, of course. And I see Jonathan somewhere in there, so he's, he's to blame for this. Um, and because the mindset there of, yeah. of what needs to be done is, is very close to the way we think about things, which mm -hmm. is it's all about investment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's all about job and opportunities in the countries in which there is a migration source. It's also about the rule of law in those countries. People want jobs, but they also want security. So the rule of law, transparency, cleanliness in all acts is very important. So the setup is one in which we, as one of the largest investors in Central America, largely believe in. And you know, we're on both sides of that migration. We have uh, you know, people, people migrating out of Central America, but we also have all of those who have migrated. And I love the way you presented it. You know, this needs to be more holistic. You know, a lot of those who have migrated largely to the U.S. are also now sending money back. So it's a bigger ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So that's what this setup is. Yeah, but anything come to mind for you, Amy, or, you know, what's on your mind? Yeah, well, first of all, I'm a huge fan of the Partnership for Central America. I think this is a model that actually can be developed globally, mm -hmm. right, B based on individual country circumstances or regional circumstances. But the concept is not the private sector as a funder of projects, mm -hmm. per se. It's a, the private sector as an enabler of progress, as an enabler of development. And we know that when migration is done well, it can be an enabler of development. So the private sector provides the tools that actually unlocks tremendous benefits for communities everywhere, for the migrant communities themselves, mm -hmm for the places where they came from, especially in the form of remittances that they send home, but also skills, perspective, language. I mean, the, the, it's really a wide, wide range of benefits. And then, of course, to the communities where the migrants go and live and work, where they enrich not only the culture, but the economies and the development of those communities. So for me, this is about recognizing, when, when you sit in a seat like mine, it's not looking to the private sector to say, OK, can you give us some money, mm. right? Not that we'll say no to money, but, <laughs> um, but really to say, OK, what does the private sector do really well that, that we don't do? Mm -hmm. And how do we make a partnership that will really not only enable public good, but enable development for all actors that's ultimately mutually beneficial. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, you're, you're oh, sorry, Priso. No, no, I'm just 
so exciting. much in there that I want to add to. Yes. Uh, so I, the, the, the vision that I like here is that migration is not something that happens at the border, which is mm, the yes. narrow view of it, right? And that's when we, when we hear about it and when we listen about it is mm -hmm. when you know, the caravan is about to come or the ship does not make it. Mm -hmm. That is just a very narrow view of mm -hmm. migration. Mm -hmm. So that's why I wanted to meet Amy and you know, mm -hmm. work with the PCA. Migration can be better managed if there are jobs and investment opportunities, if people have hope, mm -hmm. and that requires a lot of work. So I want to give you an example of something that is at the core of what Amy is saying. So in this public-private partnerships, of course, we will provide the broadband and we're building the digital mm -hmm. highways and we're all doing that and that gives people some connectivity, right, and the ability to, to work from where they are internationally. But a lot of the migrants, um, they need literacy, they need mm, yes. mentorship, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. right? They need someone to be there. So one of the most beautiful programs, the ones that, and I know we got something in the works, by the way, mm -hmm. um, one of the most beautiful programs we worked on was mentorship. So we got our executives all throughout Honduras, Guatemala, Central America with the PCA to mentor young kids, mm -hmm. kids that do not have a lot of opportunities. So it wasn't about giving them broadband, it was about giving them hope. Mm -hmm. And I remember this one little kid individual who said, that mentor, he stopped me from joining a caravan. Mm. He told me I could do more for my country here and my family mm -hmm. here that I could do sending money if I went abroad. Mm -hmm. And that is a complete way of looking at migration from our point of view. We're not the experts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, along, along those lines, what we, what we hope to achieve as an organization is enabling that young person to, to, to be able to obtain the possibilities, the opportunities that are out there, right? So there may be ways to contribute at home, where there may be jobs elsewhere where that person's skills are gonna be really valuable. So having this investment in training, allowing young people to access, especially the digital economy, mm -hmm. it is beneficial, not just for what he will bring at home, but what he'll be able to ultimately do mm -hmm. elsewhere. And what we know with the changing demographics in the world, and we know in, in North America, across Europe, parts of Asia, even places like Uruguay, right? Across the world, we are seeing labor shortages. Mm -hmm. And we know that the demographic changes are such that we, we do not have the alignment between people and opportunities. Mm -hmm. So we want to empower the people who are looking for those, those opportunities to have the skills they need, to have the mentoring they need, mm -hmm. so that they can seize those opportunities and contribute to the economies where they end up working. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the theme that I'm hearing a little bit here is really about connection and connectivity, knowing as people, right, that this is like everything we're talking about is people-focused, relationship-focused, for a better good, building stronger communities, allowing people to stay and do, like lead good lives that they're proud of. Um, and that's just sort of what I'm hearing. But Marika, what, what else? I mean, I, you know, if you take it to the ultimate moment in a very digital economy, in a fully connected economy, worldwide connected economy, yeah. migration becomes a choice. Mm -hmm. That's what we want, right? Yeah. That's, yeah. that's where it all ends yeah. up, right? Yeah. You know, because people can be hired by Silicon Valley regardless of where they are. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or they can create Silicon Valley regardless of where we are. So it's beginning to, you know, mindset beginning to, to change. And, and Amy mentioned something that we've come to realize is very important in the full story of migration. It's been decades now of migration, and I'm going to refer only to Latin America. Remittances from migrants over decades are in Central America now 30% of GDP. Yeah, it's huge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's the side of migration that is now helping, those diasporas are now helping 10, 20 years later develop their communities, sending money back mm -hmm. to those communities, bigger than foreign direct investment. That's the full picture of migration that we need to look at. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Latin America in particular is a place uh, quite a lot of promise because across the Americas there has been migration for decades, mm -hmm. right? We have seen people from different cultures come in, build communities. There's an openness, there's a willingness, there's a strong sense of um, uh, development and forward movement mm -hmm. that I think is, for us, is extremely exciting and something that we really want to facilitate. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I feel like we're just getting started here, and, and unfortunately, we have 17 seconds left, so you know, we better get ready to wrap up. And anything on your mind that you want to end or a take-home point or anything that you know, would be I mean, helpful? I hope this partnership with Millicom is really, uh, I've heard the, the word lighthouse or beacon mm -hmm. for other partnerships, right? Mm -hmm. Ultimately, this is how we build the future. It's doing so together, and it's doing so in ways that are mutually beneficial. Thank you. So my kids thought I was a boring, you know, telecom executive. Then I sent them your bios, and they were like, "Go, Dad! That's what you need to be doing." Amazing. Well, I'm completely honored to be sitting here with you too. I'm really excited about this partnership, and hopefully, this is just the beginning of many conversations. Thanks very much. Thank you, everyone.